Skate fans, this is former LAT Bird skater Sam the Man Washington. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you'll be notified each time a new video game is uploaded. Thanks for your support. Hi, everybody, I want to welcome you to the big game here today between the New York Bombers and the fabulous Los Angeles Thunderbirds. Now, Amber Anderson, he is out for two weeks and taking a well-needed rest before the World Series. But with me tonight, Mr. Bill Griffith, the owner of the Thunderbirds. Glad to see you here tonight. Well, it's nice to be here, Dick, and thank you for the invitation to share the microphone with you. Thank you. Well, I tell you, there's only two weeks left in the season, and it is big World Series time. And El Fabuloso, he's going to be here with the Hawks. Now, the winner goes into first place, and then the loser goes to play Texas in second place. Now, what about that? Those Hawks, they're some kind of team. Well, I have to admit that at the beginning of the season, we never thought anything like this would be taking place, Dick. All the experts had picked the, the, the Hawks to wind up in last place. But along comes El Fabuloso. We never, we never considered him seriously either. But I have to say, though I don't like the man, I respect him. He's done one heck of a job on the Hawks. He's molded them together as a powerful team. And, in fact, next week when the, the final season of the series comes up, the Hawks are actually favored over the T-Birds to wind up in first place, so uh, we've got a lot of work to do. I tell you, there's some kind of tough team in El Fabulo, so he, he's the man to do it. He says he can do it. He says he's the greatest. But there's good news also. Yeah. You know, Ronnie Reigns defeated Greg Robertson in the big match race. He's something else, a psycho. He's crazy. But I tell you, he'll be here with the T-Birds. And I tell you, we'll be right back in a few minutes, and you're going to see some kind of game here tonight. You better believe it. Hi. This is Gina Valadares. My father, Ralphie, spent most of his career with the Thunderbirds. This Roller Games broadcast is brought to you by the new book, Rolling Thunder, The Golden Age of Roller Derby and the Rise and Fall of the Alley T-Birds. Enjoy the skating action. All right, here we are, the big one here tonight, the New York Bombers and the Los Angeles Thunderbirds. It's going to be some kind of big year tonight. You better believe it. And immediately moving out, for the New York Bombers, she's a good one, that's Susan Drury, but she's had a rough time from a good looker. And you better believe it, that's Patsy Delgado. She's wearing jersey number three. And I tell you, Mr. Griffith, this gal is some kind of skater, Patsy Delgado. You better believe it. She's one of my favorites. I tell you, you put together a great team here, and this is, I call it the beautiful team on skates. There's something else. All right, we got 10 minute periods, you know, in a one minute jam time. And here she comes, Patsy Delgado. And gets a whip, no, look out, she can't get up there from Donna Young, trying to get through, trying to make the shoot on and she scores, and she gets two Thunderbird points. Well, little Patsy Delgado, she's one of the few bright stars in the Thunderbird team, and we're just delighted to have her with us. Uh, actually, I had to watch her performing off of the track. We, our monitor seems to have gone out on us here. We don't have a picture of the game but undoubtedly they'll fix it shortly. In the meantime, we'll call the action as we see it coming off the track. And uh, I'll tell you something, as great as some of the previous team girl girl stars have been in the past, Dick, you just keep an eye on Patsy, Patsy Delgado. What she just did, she's gonna do a lot more of in years to come. I tell you, she's got all the positive aspects of being a great one, and she's got good looks, too. And here's the gal I like, she's way behind right now, trying to catch up with a puppy up in front, that's Gail Bowers, a little steamroller. Vicky Steppy, number 41. She's the captain of the Scouts team. She's a good one. A double block set up now for defensive purposes. Skinny Minnie Miller along with Bernie Ricardo. Oh, look out! Blocked her one time. Still trying to go through a good move. Still trying to get through. Gail Bauer, she picks up the more points. And she scores her team. What's the level of up there? And just see that as they get five points. You see, this, this is what really upsets me about a man like 
help Pat Wilson. Obviously, he's got a good mind. He's a good organizer. Otherwise, he wouldn't have been able to do the job that he just did with the Hawks. There's Ronnie Reigns. And <laughs> they call him Psycho. There. We got our picture back. Here's the thing about Juarez. He was invited, was invited down tonight by Greg Robertson of the New York Bombers as a guest. He wanted to do a, a, a scouting report on the T-Birds for next week's action, but he's not content to just sit in the seats. He's got to get on the track and get into the action. And there he is, El Fabuloso. I, I hate to, to be disrespectful, but I really would like to call him El Fabuloso. <laughs> I don't think there's a seat big enough for him. That's why he's standing up. <laughs> that may have a point there. All right. Back to the action once again. This no gal. I've told you before, she's a good one, number five. Sue DeLapa, she hails from Santa Barbara. She's a distance runner up there. Mom and Dad will come to see all the games. Sue DeLapa, not sure. Number 46, taking the fall there, Susan Drew, and here comes Delapa. To the back of the pack, Ricky Steppy up in front of him. We got 6.25 remaining in the clock. 5 to 2 in favor of the Bombers. Steppy, Delapa, across the face one time. Delapa, long black hair, pretty gal. And right now on her derriere, she's up again. She's got a lot of endurance, this gal. Down again. Delapa, oh, she grabs her by the hair. Steppy hits her in the back of the head. And look at Vicky Steppy. Where'd this gal come from, anyway? Well, Sue DeLapa is another one of the bright young stars of the future for the T-Birds. And uh, frankly, uh, we as an organization, and I personally have been criticized many times this year for going with so much youth on the T-Bird team. But hey, this is today. The sports belong to the young people. They're, they're our future. You can't just be hanging on to the, the, the stars of yesteryear. Yesterday was yesterday, today is today, but tomorrow is the most important day in any one of our lives. And all of these young people that you see in T-Bird uniforms out there, they're going to be the stars. And look at these young people like you see on the That's screen right. right now. They're not only a future fan, he may be a future star. All right, here's my favorite out of a lot of you people. And there's a lady who's a shut-in who just loves this gal, and her name is Skinny Minnie Miller. They say go. 43, the veteran, Rosie Bartwell, and Bartwell, she's back now, Skinny Minnie Miller, she's trying to get on track, five minutes left in the period here, she's got a 60 second jam time, not much left, maybe only about 25 seconds, and look out, oh, she straddle blocks her, knocks her down hard, that man's a lookout, and here comes Rosie Bartwell, and she's going to get some blocking, Stimpy, and she just pulls her on through, and she's got about 10 seconds remaining, and she continues to ramble. She's picking up a bundle of points here. And the Thunderbirds seem very helpless. Very helpless at this moment. And three, two, one. And that's all. And how many points they say down there? I think they got a big five points. And that puts the Bombers out in front uh, 10 to 2. Much to my chagrin. You know, that's Vicky Steppy is one of the finest skaters on the bank track. Uh, she did a short hitch with uh, the T-Birds, if you may recall there, Dick, uh, a few months back. And she did a great job, but just unpredictable. Unpredictable, and as far as I'm concerned, the one thing we look for on the Thunderbird team is a group of people who are willing to work together. We have no, no place for individuals who just want to go out and be on their own and not be a part of the team. Well, you've got a great track record, many, many world championships, and I know you'd like to add another one to the annuals here of the Thunderbirds, because they are the world-famous world champion Thunderbirds every Saturday night right here in the Olympic Auditorium. All right, there's 3.36 remaining on the clock, and a pretty gal, Patsy Delgado, out there once again, and Susie Drury on the inside. Drury punches her one time, and Delgado down, right on the left side. It's up to Juanita Ricardo, stop her, and she's a bulwark on defense. Juanita Ricardo, she belts her again. 3.20 remaining on the clock. An excellent skating period, an excellent period. She gets a helmet now. They have to wear that helmet if they want to score. And Drury trying to get by Delgado. Oh, look out. Top of her again is Juanita Ricardo. Still got her. And oh, she hit her own skater and knocked her down. Not too much to speed a car there. <laughs> good family people in the front row there for, a, that, <laughs> for any row. Well, I tell you, a lot of fine people here at the Olympic Auditorium. Yes, and there are a lot of fine people down the T-Bird Network line 
who like to keep in touch with us all the time. And they do it very simply, like a very good friend of mine who I came to know through correspondence with him in Minneapolis, Minnesota, Mr. Lou LaPole, who recently wrote to us at uh, the T-Bird Post Office Box 3330-3330 in Hollywood, California, and just wanted to know what was what was the upcoming schedule of the T-Birds. We try to give you this information on TV, but we can't always do it. But if you want any information on the T-Birds, just drop a note to T-Birds, P.O. Box 3330, Hollywood, California, 90028. If you're in the L.A. area, of course, just give a call to the Olympic Auditorium, Richmond, 95171. We have two minutes left, Dick. Let's see what's going to happen. We've got to pick up that deficit. Okay, Rosie Bartwell for the Bombers and after Skinny Mini Miller. They're hitting the high part of the track now. It's a bank track made out of masonite. And they get some fine speeds up here. Let's see who can get by. Skinny Mini or Rosie Bartwell. There's our two fine cheerleaders. Oh, look out! Oh, me, oh, my! Becky Steppy was soaring through the air with the greatest of ease and landed on her backside. behind with one minute 15 seconds left to go well, by the way what did you think of our choice of uh, thunderbird cheerleaders at the same time dick well i'll tell you if i was young again myself <laughs> I, i'll tell you i'll tell you some beauties out there my wife was a little bit jealous uh, but uh, obviously uh, no harm done no harm done all right we've got just 56 seconds remaining the thunderbirds out in full force here tonight you see john hall the track he's got that fine t-bird roller dome located out in pico rivera the score still remains eight for the thunderbirds and ten for the dark bombers a two-point lead for the bombers which is 41 seconds remaining and who are they sending out they're veteran back from the war so Just about 10 yards behind him. She's gaining. But Trevino still out in front. No relation to Lee Trevino, but she's a good one. All right, there's John Hall, and he's ready for action. Oh, what in Ricardo. 18 seconds remaining. Up to the high side, but she has to go by Gail Bauer. Chunky Gail Bauer. 13 seconds remaining. A little steamroller. 10 seconds remaining. They're running out of time. What in Ricardo. She's got six seconds remaining. Can't you get through? Three. I'm still satisfied. The T-Birds are humming like a well-oiled machine, and I don't think we're going to be too worried when we come up against the, the Hawks with El Fabuloso next week. It's a crucial series. We'll be ready. I promise you that, Dick. In the meantime, the end of the period has come to pass, and we'll be back in just a moment. Well, hi, everybody. This is Dick Hallway, the Los Angeles Thunderbirds broadcaster. Say hello. This vintage roller derby games broadcast is brought to you by the new book, Rolling Thunder, the golden age of roller derby. Enjoy the classic bank track action. Oh, me, oh, my. Oh, me, oh, my. This has been some kind of game tonight. Just the start of the second period, 10-8, the Bombers out in front. But we have happenings here tonight. That's right. Back in action, Ronnie Psycho Range. And you'll see him in the pack. He'll be cooking. They're right now one of their finest for the Bombers. That's Gregory Quinn, and on the inside, now on the outside, back on the inside, on the outside, Sam, oh, up the inside, oh, 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 Sam Washington, that's right, the Thunderbird, Sam the Man Washington, one of the most exciting skaters you'll ever want to see. Two young lads watching the action here on a Saturday night, the Olympic Auditorium, right where all the freeways meet. You'll see Ronnie Reigns here, oh, he breaks in the pack with ease. Wait a minute, though. It's a fine move by the two. They look like they're going to get on through. A little man dropped back. Georgie Fernandez, and here they come again. He gets a leg roll. He goes to the high side. He's duck under. Sam the man. And Mr. Griffith working with me this evening. How many points they pick up? I think they picked up two on that one, and so that ties the score, thank heaven. By the way, I'd like to point out, if you haven't already noticed, that Frankie Macedo, number four on the T-Birds, is wearing what looks like a football helmet, and it is a football helmet, a very good reason for it. He gave us the scare of our lives last week, when after the game, he was complaining about uh, a blockage in his nose. We had to send him into the hospital. They probed it, 
uh, did some minor surgery on it, and he is okay. We told him he should lay off until the World Series time. Frankie said, I have no part of it. I want to get in there because the series coming up next, uh, let's see, uh, this, week, this weekend with the, uh, the Hawks is going to be vitally important. Everybody's got to do their part, and bad knows or not, I'll be in it. And here's an example of what he's doing. All right, coming out for them. There's Pete Bear, little Georgia Fernandez. He's a good one. For Jersey number 46, he's got a double barrel mustache. And Macedo can't take too many knocks. I hope he doesn't hit that helmet on that track. Because his head will rattle for a month down there. Look at little Fernandez. He's got the helmet in his hand. He better put it on his head down there. One of the requirements of roller games here. You have to have that helmet on unless it's knocked off accidentally if you want to score. Referee points to him. Don Laster, one of our fine referees. Range is dropping beats. back. Okay, back to the back of the pack. On defense, Ronnie Reigns, Ronald Reigns, a psycho. And one on one side and one on the other. Great Robertson along with Georgia Fernandez. Robertson down on the straight. Fernandez, he hurts his psycho. He's going wide on the back of the pack. Look at him go. He hurts his feet. Oh, he pops him. I tell you, when you got Ronnie Reigns to come back, this man's something else. Tell him about this crazy fool. Well, he's not so crazy. He's doing his bicycle right now. One of the greatest, most unpredictable, controversial characters you'd ever care to meet. Without a doubt, one of the <laughs> finest skaters on the bank track at any time, and I'll take anybody. Ronnie, some time ago, asked to go on the inactive list. And when we started getting down to the wire for the World Series, he came and he said, Mr. Griffiths, I'd like to ask you, may I please come back? Boy, what a happy day in my life. He's back. He beat Greg Robertson in his match race. He can stay with the team. And for that big, crucial series, starting with the Hawks this week, we're going to need him and every other able-bodied team we've got. That's a big one, and it starts this week at the Olympic Auditorium. Well, I'll tell you, there's six minutes and 33 seconds remaining. The score's not up in 10 apiece. And when Ronnie Reigns returned, you gave him jersey number one. And I'll tell you, he is number one. We got Sam the man Washington. Let's see what he can do here. Uh, along with number 47, that's Georgie Adams. And Adams is out in front. And Adams, you know him, he's some kind of veteran. And he is a good one. Up to the back of the pack, and it's a cycle once again, the back of the pack. Frank Robertson to help him again. Roberts along with Georgie Adams. The score's not enough with just six minutes remaining. Now Pamelosa watching from the track side. Score 14 for the Bombers, 10 for the T-Birds, 5.32 remaining. And I tell you, as I look over this fine game, as they're starting to get the pack together, I notice we have, oh, there's El Fabuloso down there. You know, once in a while you see a female referee coming over there. What about this? Well, we believe in equal opportunity in every respect. And we've had for many, many years, of course, the girls getting just the same kind of a race as the men's race. Everybody said, why aren't there girl referees? I said, why not? So. We put out the call, and Terry Tolina was one of the first to come in, and she does a great job. Every bit as good as any man, I'll tell you that. All right, they got a four-point lead. That's the Bombers with five minutes and four seconds remaining. Washington on the rail. Greg Robertson back on the pack. Robertson with the cycle back on defense. He's trying to get by him. He's trying to score with 4.50 remaining. He doesn't think they got any points. Terry Toledo says no score. I tell you, Robertson, he's not happy out there. And Ronnie Reigns is not happy. But what's up, Fabuloso leaning over the roller? Here's the referee again. What's up, Fabuloso talking about? Well, I don't know what he's talking about. Greg Robertson is unhappy because Terry Toledo, I just finished talking about how great a referee she is, how she enforces everything, what authority she has. And she has just given Greg Robertson a penalty. She's also just thrown El Fabuloso out of the, out of the track. He has no business being in there. He does if he doesn't interfere, but he's interfering. Well, you know, one thing about this man, he brought this Hawks team a long way. Absolutely. We all thought that he was crazy, that he was going to do a good job, but 
if he could just control himself at moments like that, he'd be one of the respected owners in the league. He is not. He's nuts. They call Ronnie Rain Cycle. I'll tell you, the man who just left the track you're looking at right now. There's the guy left. Look at this. You better be. I tell you, the team wouldn't be happy with you if you weren't. Okay, 335, and look who's got the jamming on it. None other than number one, the Cycle, the loony one, El Pongo Loco. Ronnie Cycle Rain. And in front of him, the Roadrunner, Jimmy Tr Oh, look at him. Ha <laughs> ha! He raised that leg up over the rail, and not very many skin. Oh, this man says I can do it. Uh oh, <laughs> oh, the road runner, he straddles the bar. In a cycle with three minutes, 10 seconds remaining, down by four points. Gonna try to show him while he was three times national bank track skating champion. He's a good one. Look at him. He reverses, and Tarinko says I can do that. He reverses. Yeah, watch me. I go, uh oh, look at him. Uh oh. Train goes 20 yards behind him. He goes right by two more skater. I can't stand this up. Here he comes. He's trying to score more. Oh, the cycle. Up to his old tricks once again. And I tell you, it's got to be one sign of great. Oh, look out. <laughs> Beautiful. It's got to be some kind of great move. You bring him back this man as they pick up how many points? A big six points. And that bloody rain. I tell you, I love him. The fans love him. And he came back just in time. The score now, the T-Birds out in front, 16 to 14 with 2.23 left in the skating period. And Ronnie, oh, if he just keeps skating the way he is right now, we're not going to be afraid of El Fabuloso and the Hawks when they come <laughs> in this week for that crucial You're series. Skating, baby. You tell him, Ronnie. You're you skating. tell him, baby. I tell you, I never turn my back to this man. He's well, not he's showing him his molars now. <laughs> you know, they call Ronnie Sanko. I don't know if it's an act or not. Look at him. <laughs> Man, I'll tell you. Oh, oh, oh he just did an unforgivable thing. Oh. <laughs> he just did a second unforgivable thing. I wish well, I weren't watching. I'll have to send him a letter and tell him that he's not supposed to do that. Like sort of I thing. say, you don't turn your back to this man. Oh, where there's a goose, there's a gander. All right, one minute, 38 seconds remaining. The Thunderbirds with a slim two-point lead, and as you know, in this exciting game, anything can happen. And with that man on the track, anything can happen. Got out front, they pick up four big ones. That's great with Quinn. I tell you, he's a fine skater. Yes, he's an excellent skater. There's just so many excellent skaters. And when I think of what's going to happen this week, this weekend in the, the crucial series with the Hawks, I just got to think that there's going to be some of the finest skating you've ever seen on the bank track. All in these two final games of the season. And I'm, you know, my heart's in my mouth. I just don't know what's going to happen. The winner will take first place. That's how crucial it is. We'll have to beat Texas in the semi-final playoffs for the World Series. The winner will get an automatic buy and go into the World Series automatically. This, this weekend, what a crucial, crucial series. Bring the family, bring mom, bring the kids, bring mother-in-law, bring father-in-law, bring them all, but for heaven's sake, come on to the Olympic Auditorium and enjoy the game like we're enjoying it and everybody else is. All right, there's only 35 seconds remaining. The cycle takes him out of there. Look at him. He's going wild. He bounces down, back up. In the meantime, the Guatemalan flyer, Ralph Vivaladeras, with 25 seconds remaining. The back of the pack. He's trying to get by George Adams in front of here. Jimmy Trinkley wants to pack him about. 20 seconds remaining. Ralph Vivaladeras, the high side, gets away from Washington. Up to Macedo. Up to Big Danny Riley. He's trying to get another whip. Only 10 seconds remaining. He's got Riley. Ed Ray. Seven seconds remaining. Candy pick up some points. He's got four. Three. Two. One. And how many did he score? He scored three big points. And little Ralph Vivaladeras. My, my Goomba. Puts the T-Birds out in front once again. 19 to 18 at the end of that skating period. And there's John Hall and Ralphie Valadares. And can I take just a moment to personally say something? I've said it to a lot of people individually, but I'd like to say it publicly on television. Two of my finest friends are John Hall and Ralphie Valadares. God bless them. They've been with me. We've been together over so many years. We've had adversity. We've had great times. They're just people you can always count on. Had a little Guatemalan, all five foot three of them, and big John Hall. I'll tell you, no matter what size, I could always say I got two of the greatest friends in the world. And any of you folks who come down here, you'll look at them and you'll say, hey, these are men. Okay, we'll be right back in just a few moments. This is former roller game skater Debbie Garvey. 
This Roller Games broadcast is brought to you by the new book, Rolling Thunder, The Golden Age of Roller Derby and the Rise and Fall of the L.A. T-Birds. Enjoy the skating action. Okay, here we are back starting the third skating period with the girls on the track. The score is the T-Birds in front, I'm happy to say. Just a little biased, because I put it up before. The Bombers are 19, and here's Dick Holloway. Well, you've put together a fine, talented team, and they are the world champion, the world-famous Thunderbirds. And there's plenty of people down here tonight watching them. They're looking at a triumph. That's right, 18th and grand. It's a nice place to come to. All right, 50 step in the back of the pack. I gotta, with a, a, a certain amount of justifiable pride, say we got some pretty ones on our team, Dick. And number one, you know, pretty Debbie Heldon. I don't think a lot of people know about this, but Debbie and, and all of these girls skated in the skating sequences for Charlie's Angels show. Uh, Debbie, I don't know if you're aware of this, uh, used to be a saleswoman for uh, Fabergé Cosmetics. And these are things that a lot of people don't understand. They think, hey, you know, the, the, the roller games girls, they're, you know, big mamas and everything. But <laughs> I tell you, they're some of the sweetest people here. It's, hey, they're family. I think that's why folks come down here and why we see so many youngsters in the audience and, and older people. It's such a composition of people. It's family. And that's why I love it. The thing I like about it is that most all the skaters here, they're so good about signing autographs and saying hello to the people. This is very important, the personal contact. And you see the kids here, they're happy. They come out, they enjoy themselves, and they watch an exciting game. All right, 21 to 18 the score. The Thunderbirds out in front with 7.50 remaining on the clock. The third skating period. And we're going to be come up with some fine interview in just a few moments here. In the meantime, the lobby gets knocked down to Susan Drury. Coming to the far side, look at that fabulous so white box one down on the far side. Oh, he says he didn't do a thing. You better believe he did. You better believe he did. And he causes more and more trouble out there. Now, Susan Drury coming up in the back of the pack. Well, I tell you, the owner of the Thunderbirds, Mr. Bill Crevice, he really loves his team. And he's going to be down with a good interview coming up very shortly. Miguel picks up points for a team. They say four points. back of their minds, they're going to be thinking about what happened, and that was Ronnie Raines beating Greg Robertson in the match race. That's right. And don't forget it, because it's very important, you know. If Ronnie would have lost, he was through. He wouldn't have been on the Thunderbirds anymore, and he had to win this one. He would not skate against El Fabuloso, but he won. He won the match race, and this big tub of lard here, El Fabuloso, that's right, the big man you see on the screen right now, he has to put his team against the likes of this crazy man, El Fabuloso. And it's going to be some kind of series coming up, El Fabuloso. And his team, the Hawks, going against the Thunderbirds with Ronnie Reigns. All right, 6.20 remaining on the clock, 20 to the 21. The Thunderbirds down by one. And it's going to be some kind of good one coming up. All right, 43, that's Rosie Bardwell. And moving in a hurry behind her. Coming up, you'll be seeing her in a second. Coming up on the screen, there she is, Juanita Ricardo. Goes right on by her. She's the leading jammer now. And Donnie Young back there. Young trying to block out Rosie Bardwell. Juanita Ricardo trying to get by Vicky Steppy. 5.56 remaining of the clock. Still a one-point lead for the Bombers. And Donnie Young out in front again as Ricardo having trouble in there. Vicky Steppy, it's a twice hit to the top of the head. Ricardo down and she knees her to the midsection. Down hard again is the cycle. Riley and Washington watching. And again, got her by the neck now. And right into the penalty box and down hard. And that's going to be all. And Steppy runs up to the track and raises her arms and says, I'm a New York bomber and blow some kisses out there. Some kind of skater. Vicky Steppy. I tell you, let's. 
center down to Mr. Bill Griffiths for a fine trackside interview. Okay, the big crucial series coming up this weekend, John, with the Hawks, it's for number one. How do you feel? Bill, you know something? These two games are the most important games of our career, and uh, we have to win these. To, these games decide first place in the series, in the season standings. And at first, we took this guy Warrez like a clown. Right. As far as I'm concerned, Bill, he's still a clown. Yep. But he's done a good job with the Hawks. And yep. right now, they got a full head of steam. They're the team to beat. And Bill, somehow, we're number one. We're going to stay number one. We'll beat them. This week tells it all. Let's keep our fingers crossed. Thank you. Now back to you, Dick. All right. How sweet it is, John Howell. Tell like it is. Fine interview. I tell you, a lot of meat to that subject down there. El Fabuloso and his team coming in. It's going to be a tough series, a very crucial series. Very crucial series, but they've got the addition of Ronnie Cycle Reigns, and he fits belt trouble for the Hawks. That's what the team are hoping for. All right, Gail Bowers along with Donnie Young. Young, hailing from Compton. That's right, she's in the Compton High School. She's a good one. You can see her dancing on Soul Train. Excellent dancer. She can do it all, and she can skate too. interview down there as John Hall he said this is a crucial series and believe me it is this week it, it is going to be a big series because the winner automatically gets first place and gets a buy into the World Series and the loser gets Texas and that could spell double trouble with the addition of Ronnie Reigns they're going to be a fighting team I tell you and that cycle he's going to add a lot of a lot of a lot of help to this team Mr. Griffith well I'll tell you I'll tell you what the uh, Ronnie rejoining the team has done. It's not just that he's good physically, that he's good as a skater. He's given the whole team a lift. They were in a bit of a slump. Uh, and in fact, John Hall is still a little bit worried that they may still be in a bit of a slump. But if Ronnie Reigns wasn't here, I hate to think of what our chances could be going into these, these final two games. And this weekend, ooh, that, that'll tell it all, I'll tell you. Okay, you know, we not only have men on this team, but we have women. And this is one of the finest, one of the cutest. That's you know that I'll wear. Judging number three for the Thunderbirds. The colors are red, white, and blue. But she has to get by Gail Bowers, the chunky one. Good move to the inside. Looks like she picked up one point. Gets by Rosie Barton. Nope, she didn't get by her. Hardwell, they both have her up against the rail. One knee for the backside, one holds her in. And they're just working her over. I think she got one. I'm not sure. Oh, they throw her to the Philly Bucks. And wait, they say too close. No score. And I tell you, they're trying to bust up this team. I spot some sabotage down at the other end of the, the track. There it is. Oh. Uh, I didn't realize it, uh, but New York fans are flowing in, and you know, I hate to say it, but that man looks like another very, very good friend of mine, Dave Pound, and That's he's right. saying New York is number one. Now, I know it can't be Dave, because Dave, well, he's choking the words himself. That's By the right. way, Dave, if you're listening, God bless you. I said some nice things about Ralphie and about John Hall. I didn't mean to overlook you. I was looking at the people who were on the track. But I do have to amend my previous statement and say three people. Dave has just been wonderful. I have nothing but kind words to say for him. In fact, most people I know have the same feeling. Well, I know the fans out there feel the same way. You can probably name a whole list of them through the years. Some fine skaters you've had. And I think back over the years how Dave and I used to be at each other's throats and how out of that development is such a beautiful friendship. It really makes me feel good. Excited. Oh, 48 seconds remaining. Now, one eight Ricardo going out. A referee in between. And turn. Oh, she clobbered her one. And Vicky Steffi down hard. But I tell you, the Thunderbirds, I don't know what they're thinking about. There's only 36 seconds remaining. They're still down by two points. They're rough 
open them up, but they need to score. Well, there are times like this that you've got to overlook just plain common sense. Yes, I agree. They should be regrouping. They should be out there picking up the pack and trying to score additional points. But that little escapade that just took place down there, that in itself is probably going to be enough to get the, 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 the boys, when they get on the track, filled with momentum, which is going to drive them home. At their, that, that says it all. We're number one. That's right. Well, they've got confidence. With four seconds remaining, they have to have confidence. They're a fine team, that's for sure. I'll tell you one thing. We'll never punt on first down. <laughs> okay, there's the end of uh, the third skating period. And the score is 26 for the Bombers and 24 for the T-Birds. And we'll continue with the conclusion of this very exciting game in just one moment. Hi, I'm John Hall, former T-Bird General Manager. This roller game skating action is brought to you by the publisher for Rolling Thunder, the golden age of roller derby and the rise and fall of the other T-Birds. You can order this spectacular, exciting book on Amazon. Enjoy this final period of roller skating action. Well, here we are, back in action with the Bombers leading the T-Birds 26 to 24, and here's Dick Holloway with a play-by-play. -play. All right, it's Sam the Bad Washington up in front of the old road runner, Jimmy Tarigno. Tarigno behind him now, knowing him, he'll want to get back up here and show his wear. The road runner, Mr. Oro. Beep, beep. That's him. That's right, Jimmy Tarigno, the road runner. Oh, me, oh, my, what a game. Down by two points. They were behind by two after the first period. Up by one after the second and down by two. Are they going to win it? I don't know. They're down by two now. We'll see what they can do. Look out, the pack. They want to skate away. They gave them the word, and here they go. They're going to show on their backside. Kelly, Rage, Macedo, Washington. Get down to there. Take him up for him. Up to the road runner. Up to Danny Riley. Riley pops him over the top. And did they score or did they not? No score. And the Bombers are still in front, however, 26 to 24. And John says, you're safe. But not really. Uh, well, I'll tell you, it's this kind of excitement and entertainment that attracts people from all over the United States, in fact, from all over the world, to write to the Los Angeles Thunderbirds uh, here in Hollywood. And, well, uh, the other day I, I was just advised by my secretary that I had a very nice letter from Mr. and Mrs. Jarvis in Seattle, Washington. They watch the T-Birds all the time. They want to know what's happening. They want to know when the World Series is coming up because they want to fly down here to Los Angeles to be here for the World Series. If you have any questions like this about the T-Birds, just drop a note to T-Birds, Box 3330, 3330, Hollywood, California, 90028. Or in LA, just pick up the phone and call the Olympic Auditorium at Richmond, 95171. Happy to answer any of your questions. Back to the eight. All right, there's eight minutes remaining, 26 to 24 the score. Just a two-point lead for the Bombers. And he's going to try to bust through, and that's Georgie Adams. And he's got Gregory Robertson back to help him. Back is a psycho. Psycho, Ronnie Reigns, the back of the back of the pack. That's right. He defeated Greg Robertson. And he's going to be with him, going against the Hawks in that big crucial series coming up this weekend. Oh, look at this kid yelling. Come on. Fabuloso, he had Ralph de Valadero, so he's squeezing the life out of him. Oh, he's big, he's mean, he's bad, even smells bad. Uh-oh, uh-oh, John Hall, he's getting vicious out there. He's going after El Fabuloso. El Fabuloso runs off the track, takes off, and John Hall with a two-by-four. Crucial series. Oh, he breaks that two by four and a half. And now Fabuloso takes off. And Ralphie Valadares get up very slow. 6.41 remaining on the clock. The clock continues to run. And Ronnie Reigns, that man right there, will be in the big series this weekend. That's right. Ronnie Reigns will be with the team this weekend going against that Hawk team. President and General Manager El Fabuloso. But he's got to worry about El Poco Loco. 
And Ronnie Reigns of Poco Loco has the helmet now, the cycle, number one. And let's see what number one can do. He gets to the front of the pack, and he told him before this game, he's going to try his hardest to score some points for Mike and Mark Mullaney of Glendale. But he's not going to do it this time. The cycle's down hard, and the Mullaney's will have to wait as Greg Robertson, he's the leading man with 5.50. Robertson, the leading jammer in the back of the pack now. The cycle back trying to stop him. Not just helmet up the top of his helmet. 5.40 remaining. Puts his helmet back on. He's got some help now. He's got Gregory Quinn back to back. Quinn with a head of hair. And both of them work on the cycle. One on one side and one on the other. They cruise right away. But Robertson picks out some points in there. As they continue to work on it, he picks up three points. And right now, 34 to 24, a 10 point lead with 520 remaining. And we'll be right back in just a few moments. Well, as owner of the T-Birds, I'd never be talking to you, but as pinch hitting for Elmer Anderson, I have to talk to you. It's my job, you know. So you're going to be in for the big crucial series next week. You think you're going to win? Are we going to win? The Hawks are already for number one. We've proven that we're number one. We're number top seed at number one, unequivocally. Of course we're going to win, old man. You know that we're going to buy you out. You know that the Hawks are going to destroy the Thunderbirds, and we're buying them out. The Hawks are number one. I brought them to be exactly what they are today. The number one We'll team. have a brief timeout right now while we go back to something important, forever. okay? The Thunderbirds are going I tell you, I don't know how you can really put up with that man. John Hall talking to one of the fine cheerleaders. Mr. Griffith, Bill Griffith, he's the owner of the Thunderbirds, as we said. And he's down there trying to interview El Fabuloso. Now, I tell you, this man owns the Thunderbirds, and how can he put up with listening to this guy? I tell you, he'd probably be glad when Elmer comes back, because this guy drives you woolly bully. But he says he's got a team, and he does have a team. They were expected to come in last place, and they fought themselves right up to where they want to be, right up to top spot. And that big series coming up this weekend it's going to be some kind of series. Now, you want to make sure you be here. The Olympic Auditorium on Saturday night. It'll be a big one. The Thunderbirds going against the Hawks, and that's going to be some kind of big, big series. And how he can put up with interviewing the likes of El Fabuloso. You know, El Fabuloso is about three times his size. He's lucky he didn't take a pop shot at him. That guy's liable to do anything. But here's a man right here, Ronnie Reigns, that you don't know if he's going to slug you or kiss you. He's crazy, this guy. El Poco Loco, they call him, but he's full of excitement. And boy, can he skate. That's the name of it. Look at him. I tell you, skate. There's no word for this man. He knows all. Look at that. The split. This. You got something. Now what's he doing? Leaning over the rail. He's, he's got a little girl. There he is. He's, he's dancing with her. I tell you, where did you find this man originally? Well, I don't have enough time to tell you right now. Bushes? No way. Ronnie has been with me for, let's see, 15 years. And when, when they say that a man like this is psycho, and you see what you're seeing right now, that's not psycho. That's humanity. He's a little wild. He's a little woolly. He's unpredictable. But uh, uh -oh. <laughs> let's oh. stay with him. Uh, I tell you, <laughs> <Beautiful. laughs> oh. oh, Bertie! I tell you, that kid and that lady will remember that their whole life. And look at Ronnie. Oh, dear. He's gonna have a heart attack down there. He's so excited. <laughs> Well, that's the thing. When you come down to the roller game, and this weekend will be no different than any other, even though it's a crucial game, you can defend that that man, Ronnie Reigns, will just break the, 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 the excitement for a moment. You'll make it possible to just pull the plug and let everybody relax, and that's what, that's why he's an asset to the team. All right, there's two minutes, 38 seconds just remaining. Don't, just don't bring your wife down. He's liable to kiss her. <laughs> okay, we still got a game on, folks. That's right. Ronnie Reigns in the game. That's right. Picks up a bundle. How many points did he score? Oh yeah, 
They got a big seven points. That gets the T-Birds back in the ball game. They were down 34 to 24. They were down by 10. That was one minute and 40 seconds left. They only trailed by three. 34 for the Bombers. 31 for the T-Birds. What's going to happen? Is this a preview of what we're going to see this weekend when the T-Birds take off and tangle? Lock horns with those rough, tough hawks in the two most crucial games of the entire season. It's all down to this. After the whole season, it's boiling down to the final series. This big game, this weekend, with El Fabuloso and his Hawks. Well, I tell you, the people are standing up. The cheerleaders, Sydney's yelling, Kathy's yelling, John Hall's running around the track. The T-Birds are all standing up off the bench, and I tell you, the New York Bombers are off the bench, too. One minute, two seconds of inning. They're down by three, and the little man that I've been worried about all night has a helmet. I don't believe it. They're standing up the veteran. They know his capabilities, but I'm worried. Forty-three seconds remaining, and Greg Robertson in the back of the back of the pack. He has to get by him. Macedo, he knows all the moves, all the tricks, but he's got another veteran up in front of him, Greg Robertson. But look who's stopping back to help now. The psycho, he's weaving in and out. He bounces him across the face. Twenty-six seconds, and here we go. All right, oh me, oh my. Look at the gal. There it is. Oh, Riley. He takes up. Look at the teamwork. First it's Ray, then it's Riley. Now it's Well and Harris. Oh. I'm not sure how many they got. Only 10 seconds remaining. I think they might have tied it, but did they get enough? They got six seconds remaining. They're running out of time. Two, one. I don't know. Hey, I did, did it. it. I did it. I did, did it. They did it. Seven points. Seven points. T-Birds 38. Bombers 34. All right. Not a bad comeback. All right. Okay. Well, look, we got to wrap up right now. I'm going to go downstairs and talk to John Hall and see if I can have another word with Juarez. And we'll be back in just a moment. John, I have to say that was one of the most thrilling comebacks that I've ever seen. Just keep it going that same way. And I know that we've got Juarez in our hip pocket this weekend when that crucial series comes up. Bill, you said a mouthful, and I'll just reiterate it again. This weekend is the most crucial weekend of our season. And against that fat man's team, that Juarez's team, we'll do the same thing that we did tonight, and we're going to take both those games. Hi, honey. Hi, <laughs> Bill. Thank you very much. Okay. We'll do it. Thank you very much, hon. <laughs> okay. In the meantime, okay, John, everybody loves him. No wonder. How about you? Do they love you, too? God, what did he come here? Just straight from his job? Look, uh, look. Yes, they love me. These people love me. They love me. And they love the heart. The heart to the number one team. Let us say no more. Team. I have a feeling the that Juarez is confident. The heart to the number one team. They're going to win the what World Series. What are you going to be like at the end of the season? At the end of the season. Remember what the Hawks were when I took them over? Remember? The Hawks were nothing. Okay. Now that I'm on it, Okay, Dick, take it away. I don't think we can stand anymore. Thank you. Oh, I tell you, abuse, abuse, abuse. This man takes it, but he loves it, I think. I'll tell you, the score is 38 to 34 of the big game here tonight. The T-Birds win it. And don't forget this weekend, the Hawks will be here, and this man, El Fabuloso. And he is some kind of guy. He says he's the greatest. He's got to be the probably the most crucial series in many, many years for the Thunderbirds. The people, they were down here. They're yelling at him, screaming at him. The people just have a complete disregard, a, a hatred for this man. But I tell you, he is something else, this guy here. He's got his team right to the peak for first place. It's up to the T-Birds to win this game to get into first place. If they lose, they play Texas. You know how crucial this game is. They've just got to win this game. It's going to be a big one. So bye-bye, everybody.